picking up where I left off on the home computer. Step number six is just making a Boolean value to tell the computer I want to check the answer. So if I type in check answer equals false, it makes it. Then I make the button that sets that to true. If I look at the settings, all the script does is set the value to true. It's going to make other things happen, but that happens in the other things and how they're, they are written, not in the button. And the next one is to make my feedback to tell you you got it right. And this is where things happen. If I click on the settings for this, under advanced, the conditions to show the object are that I've clicked checked answer to be true and that right answer is not false. And next, did I say sequencing was a little weird? I make the second number for my multiplication. And then I create the number that's the answer. And that's going to be the first number times the second number, which I get to by going down to my input. And this shows me where I can click things like times, and it will figure that out. Next, I make my number the place to hold where the input's going to go. So that is my input number. And then, number 12, I make the input box. That's a little more involved. I'm going to go up here, click there to make it, and that will. this will be my caption. And I also, if I go to these settings, and the style, I've made the input box length 3, so it's not big enough to write a sentence in. Then number 13 is where I determine whether I've got the right answer or not. And that would be when my input answer is the same as the answer answer. And then right answer would be true. And step number 14 is my feedback if you didn't get it right, but you asked to check the answer. And again, this guy, it's settings. Say, it can't be the right answer but I have to have check, click check answer. Then the next two steps are my attempt to show the times tables in question as an array of dots with the ever so sophisticated added property of putting a little bit of space after the first five columns so it's not just a sea of dots. It's modeled from one of John Oldright's sequences of circles with a certain center of radius and so the center bumps over for that sequence of circles. You can play with these numbers to see what happens when you change them, and it's, it's fascinating and fun. And so this one is the sequence for if the numbers are less than five, so that it stops when it stops. And then this one is if my, num my second number is bigger than five, so it will make all five. And then the next step, I actually picked the problem where my picked problem is just a random element from that big array of numbers. And those that, that this text is what gets parsed into the first number and the second number of the problem. And then I remember, oh yeah, I need to do the second part. If it's bigger than five, I need to do the six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. So those are those circles. And then the last step is for when I want the option to whether I show the array or not, and I haven't worked that in yet. So this is a really quick and dirty roll through, um, but it's a YouTube video, so you can ask questions in the chat if you read this.